Hey everybody, welcome back to Big Guy Blather. I'm John Hobbs and we're here to help you improve as a furniture maker so you can enhance the beauty and function of your living space. This installment is another supplement to our circular saw guide reel build video. So you may wanna go check that one out and come on back. Things might make a little more sense to you. We're gonna talk about today is a couple of features that you can add to your guide reel that will improve its performance even more. Let's get started. One of the best ways to improve the performance of your guide rail is to reduce the amount of friction between your saw and the guide rail itself. One of the easiest ways to do that is with a couple coats of wax. You don't need anything special, just some everyday ordinary paste wax will do. It doesn't have to smell pretty or look nice, it just has to be slippery. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to start with a clean dry cloth. This is just a hunk taken off of a, an old t-shirt, uh, so it doesn't need to be anything special. Uh, you just want to get a nice liberal amount of wax onto the cloth and then just start rubbing it in. And it can be nice and thick to begin with. Very simple, very easy. So we'll rub that up and down the entire length of the, uh, the surface where the saw is going to slide. And then we're just going to let that dry for a few minutes. Once you have a nice thick coat on there, like I said, just let it sit for a few minutes to dry. It may take two or three to five to 10 minutes, depending on uh, temperature and humidity levels. You can, you'll see it kind of start to get a little hazy um, once it's dry. Uh, then you just want to take another clean, dry cloth and go ahead and just kind of wipe off all the excess and get it rubbed in nice and, nice and deep as much as you can. I also recommend you do the exact same thing with the bottom of the base plate of your, your saw, um, especially this area between the blade and, and this edge of the guard. Same process, just get a nice healthy amount on your clean dry cloth. It can be the same one you use for the guide. Uh, apply liberally to the base plate. We're gonna let that sit for a few minutes until it starts to haze over a bit. And then we'll wipe it off with our, uh, our other clean dry cloth. That's it. You're going to want to apply two coats, maybe even three. So as I say in the shampoo business, rinse and repeat. Done. Another great way to reduce the amount of friction between your saw and the guide rail is by using some ultra high molecular weight tape. This product is extremely high in durability and very low in terms of friction. It's a, some form of plastic and it comes in other formats as well. You can get it in blocks and sheets, and it works very well in applications where there's a lot of rubbing, but you don't want a lot of friction. So things like drawer runners and applications like that. Okay, in the tape format, which we're gonna use here, it's self-adhesive, so you simply pull back this white backing tape, and it leaves this stuff, it's almost like scotch tape, but it's a little thicker. And we're just gonna wanna put a, a strip you know, maybe a uh, half three quarter inches off of our guide strip. And we want to put it down very carefully because we want to make sure that it goes down very smoothly. So we don't want any ripples or bumps in it that's going to cause our, our saw to hop and skip as we run it down our guide rail. So I recommend you put uh, two strips of this down the, the full length of your guide rail. Um, like I said, the first one would be a half to three quarters of an inch off the the guide strip, and the other would be about the same distance, half to three quarters inch away from the cutting edge. Now, I actually recommend that you use either the wax or the tape, not both, in spite of what I've just demonstrated. The self-adhesive tape doesn't stick as well to the waxy surface as it would to a raw wood surface. So that's something to consider as you weigh your options as well. The final feature we want to talk about uh, in this episode is, is putting a, a, a T-bar or a T-brace or cross piece, whatever you want to call this. Um, we're going to mount it to the bottom of the guide rail perpendicular to our cut line. And what this will do is it's going to make it a little quicker and a little easier to get our guide rail set up. Uh, without this, you need to measure up from both ends of your workpiece, uh, appropriate distance, make marks, get the cut line line up to those two marks, and then clamp it down. Uh, and that ensures that your, your cut line will be perpendicular to uh, the edge of your workpiece. With this in place, and assuming we get this perfectly perpendicular, which is very critical, we only need to make one measurement 
on our workpiece, make one tick mark, and then we can simply line this up, make sure that our cross cross member is flush to the edge of our workpiece, and now we can be confident that our guide rail is perpendicular to this side and parallel to this side. So one measurement, one mark, and we cut. Okay, so now I have my guide rail turned over. It's upside down. I've made a little mark here, C, so that I can identify the cut line. So with it laid upside down, it's a little bit difficult to tell which edge is the cut line and which is just the back, the clamping area. Uh, and you can also see I've measured 48 inches from the far end of the guide rail and made a mark and extended that with my square, which I now have out as well. As I mentioned, it is super critical that we mount this cross piece at a perfect 90 degree angle. It's actually gonna go this way, sorry. At a perfect 90 degree angle to our cut line. If this is off at all, then every single cut we make with this jig is gonna be off as well. And if we're cutting multiple pieces, those little errors can add up and it becomes a huge error. And when you go to assemble your project, it's not gonna to go together very well and we don't want that. Just a quick comment on the length of our cross piece. Uh, this is a scrap and it's actually fairly long. It's either maybe 18 inches, 20 inches long. Um, at minimum, you want it to be the same width as the base of your, your guide rail. Um, at that width, it's actually very convenient. It's not gonna catch on anything. It's not gonna get banged around as much uh, or make the guide rail any more difficult to handle. However, that's gonna make it uh, a little less, a little, little more difficult to get it squared up. So the longer this, this cross piece is, the easier it's gonna be to get it squared up and it's gonna stay square. However, as you can imagine having this appendage sticking off the end of it at a right angle, um, this could catch, it's gonna catch on things and get knocked around and it's gonna make it a little more difficult to store and handle your guide rails. You may have noticed that I've already drilled holes and countersinks in my cross arm, so we're ready to attach it. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm just gonna use screws, but I do recommend that if you choose to add this feature, you use glue as well. It will help prevent this arm from getting knocked out of 90 degrees, uh, out of perpendicular to your cut line, um, especially if your cross arm extends out past the, uh, the width of your, your jig. It's more likely to get knocked around and knocked out of perpendicular. Um, if it's glued as well as screwed, it's much less likely to get knocked out of perpendicular. All right, so as I'm attaching this, again, I'm gonna use this square and make sure I get this thing attached perfectly perpendicular. I've got one end up against my cut edge, which I've marked here. I'm gonna bring it up onto this, this line. The line is not gonna be used to align my arm at all. It was just there to help me place the square when it was time. Now you don't want this to hang over the cut edge. Um, it's okay if it does, just the first time you use it, the saw is gonna trim it off flush. So we may as well just kind of start with it flush. So again, I'm gonna make sure that this thing is locked in perfectly square. Get my screw in. Okay, get that first one locked in. And then again, double check squareness because it still has a little bit of wiggle room with just one screw in it. Okay, we're looking good and square. Drive our second screw. Again, triple square, triple check, double check, make sure this thing is square, square, square. Looks good. And that's it. Okay, so now we can see our guide rail has this handy appendage attached to it. So again, to use it, I would just measure and mark my line. Now I can just scoot it up, make sure that arm is nice and tight to the edge of my workpiece. And now I can be confident that my cut edge is parallel to this edge and perpendicular to this edge. Make my cut done. All right, well, there you go. We've given you a couple features you can add to your guide reel to improve its performance even more. So until next time, 
I'm John Hobbs, and this has been, wait a minute, did I mention that it was really critical that the cross arm is perpendicular to the cut line? Did I say that? Okay, anyway, so I'm John Hobbs, and this has been Big Guy Blather. <laughs>